good afternoon, Lace Jump, and I'm John. This is Betty, a true red. Welcome to Old World, a game that is uh, very interesting indeed. Because uh, at first glance, okay, it's another one of those games uh, that's saying, hey, let's murder civilization and take its throne. In which case, this would be a bad time to do that. Humankind's just around the corner, and that's looking really promising. Okay, bad timing. But this isn't just a riff on civilization, it's more an experiment into what happens if you were to cross civilization with Crusader Kings, and the result is rather intriguing. So, let's kick off a nice gamer's roam here, and... Okay, fair warning, this game's not for the faint-hearted. You may notice, up in the uh, top bar there, yeah, it's turn one, and I've got myself ten different currencies I need to keep an eye on. And also, yes, there's a lot of um stats, and uh, a court, and the people in the court are also contributing uh, to the various stats, and uh, Prince Remus is really angry with you, and to be honest, if this is the day we're setting up Rome, then he bloody well should be, because this is the day I stab him, because I'm playing as Romulus, so, I mean, maybe he survived, maybe he's just currently in hospital, but I can understand why he might be a bit miffed, yes. So, probably best we just get down our first city, but yes, okay, one, you can't just lay down cities anywhere, they've got to be laid down on at these here, like, you know, existing village locations, like, instead you're kind of uh, taking over and upgrading an existing urban area, and uh, you've got to dedicate it to one of the four families you've got inside your empire, these are all different depending on who you're playing as, so for example, uh, here we go, these are the, uh, yes, the Fabius family. So these guys are champions, meaning if you dedicate the city to them, the city's going to be a bit more military. So if it's right on the frontier, you've got a warlike neighbour, probably not going to be a bad idea. And I'll go into what they all do as it becomes relevant, but for the time being, yeah, I like these guys. The Claudius family are the landowners, so cities grow faster, more settlers, more workers, yeah, this here, this is the good stuff. And also, these guys really like crop resources. It gets me bonus culture. Culture lets cities level up faster. And what's this? Looks like a bunch of crops to me. So yes, we're going to be founding Rome in the name of the Claudius family. Despite the fact that Romulus just did it. So I'm sure it's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. And next thing's next, I need to pick myself a tech. Now this I like, by the way. Okay, bunch of stuff I like in the tech tree, which is... One, the tech tree isn't just like a straight line like it is in Civilization. It ultimately ends up specialising in ways that don't actually, you know, mutually feed into each other. It's all a bit generalist at the beginning of the game, but as you start going down over here, you may notice there are three distinct branches. So you can go like, you know, ultimate in the direction of economics, ultimate in the way of military, or down the bottom, ultimate in the way of of industry. So I like that because it means that empires don't just all evolve in the same direction ultimately and it's just a matter of who gets there first. Instead you can have an economic powerhouse next to an industrial powerhouse next to a military powerhouse. That's good. I kind of hope Civilization 7 does something similar. And two, you don't just get to pick anything of your choosing. Okay, instead, three techs are going to be randomly selected out of a possible draw deck every time you need to start doing a new tech. So on this occasion, we happen to have drawn a whole bunch of basic techs, but you can get lucky and just draw, you know, a really advanced tech, like forestry. So you can start getting light chariots out super early. So there's an element of randomness to each game depending on what techs you draw. So I like that. Adds to replayability. Lots of good decisions here. For the time being though, yeah, we've just gone for landowners, farmers, etc. Let's get out uh, Granary. Granary and administration seems like a good idea. So yes, the game now gives you a couple of starting units and Rome starts off producing a settler by default. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Mr. Scout, you're going to want to go in this direction, I'd say, because there's something sparkly over here. But this is where things get a bit uh, interesting. If you're coming from Civ, you're probably expecting every unit to have, you know, a certain number of movement points, certain number of actions it could do per turn. Not in Old World. No, that's not how it works. Instead, movement, actions, everything seems to have been rolled up into one empire-wide action point system called Orders. So, if I just want in a single turn, basically nothing but one unit to do one thing incredibly well over and over again... I can do it. There's nothing to stop me. So right now I've got seven orders down the bottom left there. If I want to move my scout over to here or here, it tells me how many orders I'm going to have left after I'm done. So uh, that's going to eat two, uh, getting me down to five. 
I think that's fine. So he's going to move over there and run into a special event. So yeah, again, there's a bit more of a focus on events as you go, which feels a bit more Crusader kings -y to me, which is really nice. It adds a bunch of flavor to the game. So here we go. We've got ourselves a, a seer. And uh, she's a character, because again, like Crusader Kings, everyone's got their own stats, they can join your court, and if they're in your court, that's gonna impact your wider empire. Also, it looks like we may have just accidentally come across the, um, the Oracle of Delphi, given inhaling smoke, seer, etc, etc. So, okay, I'll serve you faithfully, I'll serve you till the end of your reign. So, we can just invite her to court right now. Or instead, I can say, screw it. How about a big giant boost to science? So as I'm currently on, yeah, plus 15 science, you can see next to the little, uh, yeah, beaker at the top there. That is uh, four years worth of science all in one go. So I could basically just get most of my first tech for free. But alternatively, yeah, if I want her in the court, then is she good? She is uh, smart. She's not brave. But honestly, having the Oracle of Delphi just chilling out in the palace, sure, why not? She can come along. And if I had the right perk, there might be a new special event. But I'm not religious right now. I'm just like, I think, a strategist or something. There's a bit more roleplay to it. There's a bit of interesting stuff going on around these parts. So there we go. She's now over here in my court as a courtier. And as a courtier, she has effects immediately. So she's already adding to my science empire-wide by a decent degree. If I was to say marry her, however, and I could do that right now, then straight away, what's going to happen? Massive boost to science. So, oh, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do here. If there's a problem, there's a bit too much. It gets a bit overwhelming at the start of the game. So let's not marry her just yet, because remember that whole family thing? You know, Claudia's family, all the rest of it. Sooner or later, they're going to start showing up and deciding whether or not they like me. And if they don't like me, that could be trouble. So I should probably marry someone from one of them families uh, just to, you know, secure an alliance, if you like. So, my scout's moved, and he's moved a fairly long way, but he can now keep cocking moving. If I just want him to move uh, more in this direction, though, yeah, this is very tough terrain, I can just say, you know what? Burn some orders. That's fine with me. Before we do that, though, uh, let's move over to uh, my worker, because my worker might want to do a few bits and pieces, yes. Right now, I don't have the specialist tech to, yeah, build the groves or whatever I need for all this stuff. So instead, uh, let's build a farm. And if I hover over that, it just tells me uh, where's the best place to build a farm. And apparently the best place is uh, right here. Yes, you, buddy. I want you to go over here and I'd like you to build a farm right now. That's going to eat a little bit of wood. Right now, we've got no wood coming in, but I can buy and sell this as much as I want to. Or rather, I could do, but I've got no money. As for my warrior, he can go down over here and aha, there's something going on in this part of the world. So how about we just move you down over to there and I can't make it to that shrine right now. Or can I? Because yes, you can just straight up buy more orders if you want to. This game has a huge amount of flexibility. So if I just want more orders, which converts straight into, you know, military units moving, military units attacking... I can choose to burn money or indeed, yeah, this currency, which is like training. It represents your general ability to wage war. That's expensive, so I don't want to do it on this occasion, but I can just buy more orders to keep my troops moving, to keep my scouts exploring. I can, you know, just spend a single turn doing nothing but sending my scouts on the most ridiculous odyssey in the history of the world, or I can dedicate everything to getting my army moving, fighting, over and over again. There's some interesting stuff here. So, following turn, and yes indeed, food's ticking down. We're also losing iron, because my warriors needed to be maintained. So you kind of need to just keep an eye on all of these currencies, uh, make sure you're producing enough. But, Mr. Warrior Man, use one of my orders uh, to go over here. And, uh, who have we got? Okay, she was once commanding the armies of a great nation, then resistance brought it crashing down. She's willing to share her knowledge, uh, if we're willing to listen. Veteran Soldier, so... Okay, that is, uh, that's a free technology, or, oh, okay, it's Boudicca, got it. So either we invite her to court, or we say, you know what, I'll have a free tech. But no, I'll have flipping Boudicca, I might flipping marry Boudicca, that sounds fun. Oh yeah, she is mega brave, as you'd understand. So as a result of that, all of a sudden, we have got ourselves, just as a courtier, a global plus 21 to military training rate. So my training rate is now through the cocking roof. 
10 from Rome, 16 from me, because I'm a bit brave too, but 21 from Boudicca. Oh my, that is... Oh, that'll flip and do. Also, yes, it's Boudicca. I'm not saying Bodicea. That was a later invention. It is simply wrong. Her name is Boudicca. That's what we're saying. To make sure things don't get too out of hand, you can't go into territory you can't see. So when your scout's exploring, it's going to take me a bit of time to get over to here. There we go. We've also discovered a, a landmark. What landmark is it? It might be those mountains or it might be the horses. I don't know what I'm discovering. Henceforth, these hopefully mountains shall be called John Rocks. Huzzah for me. So, I found a city site with some horses nearby. That there, that's not bad at all. So, uh, go over here, keep burning points, and uh, you may notice, yes, I am losing moves. So, uh, I've got enough orders uh, to keep going. But you can only move uh, so many moves until you get tired. To stop you, you know, going too ridiculously out of control. Except this being this game... Uh, there are ways around that. So just move over to here. And then move to here. You're probably thinking, well, that's it. Even though I've still got orders, I can't move. Oh, I can. I absolutely flipping can. All I need to do is go into force march mode. Then I can move as much as I want as long as I've got orders which I can just buy more of. So if you want to, you can just keep this unit moving forever. But again, that's a bit expensive. So I don't want to do it right now. It's not an emergency. Uh, instead, I'd rather have uh, this guy. Oh, this is a bit tricky. Okay, there's... Oh, there's something over here. That's wine. Love it. Get over here. Another city site. Oh, and my scouts run into something. A woodcutting tribe of Thracians. So, okay. Thracians are kind of like city-states in civilization, which is uh, there are barbarian camps out there, and you just don't war with them. But Thracians, when you run into those guys and Gauls and a few others, they're not proper full empires, but you can engage with them diplomatically. They want to be friendly. They're saying, hey, would you like some free what? Because I recognize that you're Rome and you've got a bit of a reputation for murdering and taking over everything. So how about you just take this wood and leave us alone? So I can say tremendous. I really hope that's a partner and Romulus pronounces it as tremendous. And then just like, you know, looks around the room as nobody laughs and it's all very embarrassing. That would just be great. Or I could just start murdering them. But on this occasion, I've got the right personality type to, oh yeah, get the special event. So instead of gaining a bunch of wood, because I've got 280 wood, it's not going anywhere. I can get more. I can just buy it. I can say, you know what? We could spruce up Rome, giving me a giant pile of culture, which is what we'll be doing. Yes. Because that just led to a massive boost in Rome's culture. Because, okay, there's even more meters. As I say, this is not for the faint-hearted. And uh, the tutorials can be a bit on the vague side. So, uh, this is really one for people who are super into this stuff, I've got to say. But, as culture goes up, and yeah, right now it's just going up very slowly, bit by bit. If I build, like, you know, some fancy buildings, like, say, religion, it's going to start going up faster. Then, at my city, is going to start leveling up. That's going to be advantageous, because that's the barrier to building more advanced stuff. Meanwhile, growth is, yeah, what we're trying to boost right now with the benefit of those lovely farms. Uh, and down over here, discontent, which just slowly grows over time. So you've just got to counteract it with, say, uh, here we go, there's a nice festival up here. So do that, burst of growth, burst of unhappiness going down. Because, yeah, this takes a more realistic view of the ancient world, which is cities generally weren't happy. And there was a constant risk of, you know, riots, all the rest of it. So if that meter fills up, it's not game over, there's no rebellion. It just means the city starts losing productivity. So yes, there we go. That was happening over there. So there's some Thracians. No need to actually uh, cause any trouble with them. No trouble whatsoever. But this city looks, you know, pretty good. In between the mountain range of John Rocks and Tabby Rocks. Oh, but here we go. The super mega farm is done. All of a sudden, food's now to the positive, And Rome is just eating more and more food as it gets bigger. Growth is going to start kicking off again. So yeah, we're going to get more and more citizens. Lovely. There we go. Administration is done. And okay. Now this is another very interesting thing here. Which is, uh, what I can do is uh, I can take a free settler right now. And that there's a really nice bonus. But if I do that, three years. By the looks of it, yes. I won't be able to do any more research for three years. So I'm starting to fall behind. But honestly, free settler. I can't say no to that. 
So I've got a settler coming in one, and then another free settler that's just going to appear in three, but I don't need to actually train it in my city. So that's got to be worthwhile. Oh dear. So Remus, having been, you know, ignored by me and possibly stabbed by me on the day we set up Rome, has unfortunately become a drunk. As a result, his discipline has gone down, and that's actually going to hurt the entire cocking empire. Like, just as a courtier, he is now reducing my gold globally by 10.6. In fact, no, it's worse than that. He's my heir. So, okay, as my successor, yeah, it's minus 16. So he's literally drinking as much as I'm bringing in, oh dear. He might need to have a bloody accident, potentially. And here's a surprise, so actually, the Thracian woodcutters want to send me a bride, so okay. Okay, 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 she's, uh, she's honestly not bad, I mean, she's alright, she'll cocking do, but, yeah, do I really want to marry a random Thracian woodcutter? No, screw it, screw the Thracians, and as no one else is bothering to actually, you know, come and propose to me, I feel like, yeah, I'm marrying her. So, we are going to marry the Delphic Oracle, because why the flip not? Aha! And here we go. So, yes, I can now start converting my citizens into specialists. So, they're not just bumming around the forum anymore, they're going to do something useful. It's going to keep the city busy for five years, but it means one of these citizens is going to become a farmer. And I can do this because there's a farm for him to go to. So, I think you need, yeah, the facility for a citizen to move into before you can actually do all of that nonsense. And uh, that's going to lead to more growth, more food, uh, and ultimately more science together with expanding the borders. And uh, that's got to be the right thing to do. Okay, so I'm now married, meaning, yeah, the seer has now been promoted to spouse. So the benefits she was giving me are now even stronger because the game kind of assumes like, you know, she's now more central to the running of the empire or something. And in terms of you, Mr. Settler, honestly... Yeah, this looks just fine. We'll put you right over there, and then we need to found a city. So, okay. What's this city going to do? This city is more about... Well, there's some scrub round over here. There's big mountains. Don't really know what you do with big mountains. I assume mining, right? So yeah, we could make them all champion -y. That's going to lead to more military production, which will allow me to, yeah, move units around uh, much faster. The alternative would be Valerius, who are patrons. So, okay. The cities they're managing produce bonus administration-y stuff, together with producing more culture if they've got specialists. But they don't start off with bonus citizens. That's going to be a bit slower to do. They can speed up projects with money and also minus one discontent level per culture event. Is that good? It sounds good. I'm not 100% sure. And new courtier, court minister. So they're going to send somebody to join my courts. And finally, the Julius. So, okay, they produce... Oh. They produce not only a bonus order every year for the entire empire, for every city they control, but on top of that, they gain a free treasury, free giant pile of admin. I mean, honestly, that seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Yes, okay. Also, this city will not be connected to the capital. Is that important? I don't even know what that means. There's too much stuff going on. Yes, Julius City, let's go. And I am now Romulus... The settler, and I have discovered this river. Okay, fine, sure. I like how you can name everything. It's just lovely. Though the downside is, now we don't have a worker. I think if I'd given this to the Claudii, it would have had a free worker from day zero. So uh, let's just get one of them out straight away. Oh, and my warrior heading south and just exploring has encountered our first proper empire. It's the Babylonians, who are the sciencey lot. So, okay. They're whipping a man who has been bound. Warriors accuse him of inciting rebellion, stalking members of the royal family, attempting to infiltrate the treasury. Okay, pretty heavy charges. Got it. So they're saying this doesn't concern you. Walk away. I can do that, and they're actually happy, but I become cruel because I'm just ignoring a man who's being horribly mistreated. Okay, that's not necessarily good. Or I can attack him, at which point... Yeah, uh, the Babylonians aren't thrilled, uh, but I gave myself a brand new courtier. Alright, new lad, I assume the guy I rescue uh, comes to join me. But, ah, I'm so courageous, I get the special option. So, uh, as a result of that, I am a deal maker. Let's do it. 
Yep, I am brave. That's worked out for me. So Numerius has now joined me. Spectacular. Oh, bloody hell. Charisma of nine. How on earth did you not talk your way out of this problem? He would also be a spectacular ambassador, chancellor, spy master. Okay, I think we need to give this guy a job. But right now there's no jobs available. Because yeah, here we go. Certain jobs are locked behind uh, certain roles. So spy master, I need to have portcullis before we get to that. Chancellor, I need to have discovered the wheel for some reason. But he'd be really bloody good at that. And there's Babylonia. Okay, so that there, that's their major city. Maybe we just back away and uh, this city, do I really want it? Is this city worth the trouble of dealing with these bastards? You know what? Screw it. We're going to do it. We're just going to forward settle Babylonia. All right, screw those bastards. We're going to try and, uh, yeah, just hold them off here, not let them through. I feel like the champions is a good idea here. Bonus city defences. New units trained here get a bonus trait, which is really nice. So add a free garrison, so the city is more easy to defend. Yeah, get the champions in play right over here. Also, I just discovered these mountains, apparently. And probably best under the circumstances, yes. How about we just build some walls here? Oh, I've also got an heir. Okay, that's my... Oh, my niece. Okay, hang on. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, Remus managed to have a child before I did. But right now, she's cocking useless because she's a baby. So maybe don't make her air just yet. But yeah, at this point, I'm in a bit of an odd situation, which is uh, I can't actually move any more units without spending my beautiful, beautiful training. Then again, I'm swimming and training. Screw it. You're force marching. Okay, so that means now he can just basically keep moving uh, forever. And it's the Numidians. Are you a full empire or a city-state? I can't remember. Okay, so he's tipped a sack full of heads out on the ground. Got it. So, I can... Uh-oh. Um, so, I don't have enough money to buy them off. And also... Oh, no! If I was cruel, I could say, yeah, good job cutting off those heads. But, um, I can't do that because I'm not cruel. Right, we're at war with the Numidians, because unless you are as monstrous as they are, there's no way to avoid it. So, okay, we now got a war going on. And they are... Oh, they're a city-state. Oh, but they've got horses. Okay, you need to get the flip out of Dodge. Never mind, you're going to get that. So, Romulus the Explorer, the Great Migration. What's going on here? So, uh, we found some ruins. Commission scouts gain... Ooh, gain two scouts. Alternatively, gain a giant pile of science. I mean, that's a lot of science. That's about three, four turns worth of it. I was just saying I could do with more scouts. Screw it, I'm taking the scout. So, you a scout? Or, hang on. For some reason, this one's got a circle and you don't. I don't know why, but whatever. Okay, probably time to just head out in this direction and maybe run away from the guys with the, um, the horses. So, you just get over here and you just get over here, and good luck, basically, because the horses are probably going to try and murder you now. No, actually. Okay, that's nice. In which case, just push past them. Got plenty of flipping everything. Just move over to... Ooh, there's... It's just more Numidians. It's just Numidians all the way down. Got it. Also, I think we may have found the, um, the end of the world. Because this here, if we hover over it, is, uh, yeah, tile 2, then 3, 4, etc. Because there's coordinates down in the bottom right there. Okay, the world just has an end, as it turns out. It is not round. Okay, scale's a bit smaller than in Civ. Because, yeah, we're not dealing with the whole planet. We're just dealing with uh, a bit of land we all live on. And in terms of technology, we're not ultimately going to space. Instead, uh, yeah, things like, say, uh, medieval-y stuff by the Luke of it. We're kind of going from ancient to medieval era. Oh, the Babylonians have come to say hello. They don't seem to hate me yet, which is an excellent sign. So, okay. Their heir has made a shocking boast about how much better a ruler she will be one day. Okay, interesting. So, she says, hey, you suck. I'm going to be amazing. What am I going to reply? So, reveals her ignorance. She dislikes me, but the king, he's super into me. All right, so at that point, she likes me. If I back her, he really hates me. But, oh, here we go. 
okay. I am suitably charming. I can just, you know, smooth it over and it's no trouble. Now, you might be wondering, John, why on earth do you care what some girl in another empire cares about you? Surely what matters is the ruler, what he thinks about you. Yeah, okay, important thing to clarify here. We're not playing by Civ rules when it comes to mortality. We're playing by Crusader King's rules. One day, this chappy ain't gonna be leader anymore. Okay, his heir is going to take over. So, getting in her good graces early could be a useful thing. Potentially intermarrying between empires might be rather useful too. So for the time being, let's smooth it over. There we go. Now everybody's happy with me and no one cares about the fact I'm blatantly forward settling you with a highly militarized town. Oh, here we go. Rome just hit the next level of culture, meaning we get a special culture event. So, Moses has just shown up with... Uh, okay, I'm not good at my Bible stories, but, like, that's the Ten Commandments, right? He wants to, like, set up Christianity in Rome? Uh, okay, so... No, sorry, Judaism. So, okay, we could let him do that, or we could say, no, screw you, and just try and set myself up as God King instead. Or we just have our own religion, so screw it. We're going to have our own religion. Huzzah. I have no idea how religion works in this game, but you know what? We've got religion now. Marvellous. Good for us. Oh, but there's the Ishtar Gate. Okay, hang on. Hang about here. The Ishtar Gate. So if I want to build that, I need to be spending 200 of the admin currency. Also, a giant pile of iron. Loads of stone, like a dumb amount of stone. Now, I can buy stone, but, like, not that much stone. Like, that's going to start, yeah, bankrupting me fast, especially as the economy is kind of collapsing right now because I've not bothered investing in it, like, at all. Or there's the Apadana, so, okay. What's that going to cost me? Oh, even more cocking stone. Okay, so I just need a giant pile of stone. But it would generate, you know, money, which I kind of need, it must be said. Okay, stone volumes are now starting to go up because over in Clairville, we've got our first quarry down. So, okay, that there, not bad, not bad at all. Immediately get additional quarries down. All right, I just need more cocking stone to build wonders in Rome. Another new ruin found by my many, many scouts. So, we found a paved road system. Oh, is this the moment the cocking Romans discover roads? So... Okay, either break them down for... Break them down for stone. This feels like a not Roman thing to me. But on the other hand... I mean, a bonus to discipline. You know, permanently. That's a lot of gold. Kind of need that. And on top of that, giant pile of stone. I mean, we need stone. We need a lot of stone. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of, you know, an alternate universe Romans, where rather than studying the technology and thus gaining a free tack and being able to just, you know, build roads, uh, screw that nonsense, we're going to tear down roads because the stone would look better in a giant wonder just outside my palace. Oh, and we finally found someone else. Okay, beyond the ridiculous Numidian horde, uh, we found Greece. All right, it's Philip II of Macedon. You can tell because of the eye thing. So, okay, we got some traveling artisans. These guys seem pretty chill. They're very distant to us, so the chance of us, you know, having trouble is low. So I could gain... Ooh. Gain a free farmer. Or don't tell them anything. Gain some city defense for a while. And... Uh, okay, alternatively... Ooh. Okay. Take them captive to learn Greece's secrets. Giant pile of science, but Greece isn't thrilled. I'll take the free farmer. Boom. Love it. As a result of that, Rome is now looking good. Two citizens, three farmers, and discontent is now up to level one. So as a result of that, yeah, growth is down, science is down. What's red? Whatever that one is, that one's going up. It seems bad, though. We're going to sort it out, though. All right, right now, the festival is occurring. We are doing a big festival. Everyone's going to be delighted about it. Oh, now here's good. Okay, apparently there are cheaper wonders we could put together, too. So, all right. The lighthouse. I could set up the lighthouse of not Alexandria because it's going to be by Rome. That also gives me... Oh. Oh, oh, oh. That would be a giant pile of gold per specialist. Rome has got three specialists. Yes, we need to make this happen. Okay, so to buy the resources, I'd need 500 gold. 
which I don't have, but there's nothing to stop me selling food. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm rich. Okay, so now, boom. Okay, we have begun construction of a wonder. It's going to take 12 turns, but when it's done, oh, it's going to be beautiful. So yes, that's not produced by the city. It's made by a worker instead. Gotcha. Oh yes, and we finished the whole uh, divination thing. So I can now start building these shrines. And it spreads... Oh, Roman paganism. Okay, so I could actually have multiple religions I'm kind of promoting simultaneously. So okay, what do they do? Because they all do different things. So Mars is bonus to culture and to warlikeness, obviously. Enables acolytes, spreads Roman paganism. Vulcan, meanwhile, is... All right, what's that? A uh, bonus of military per adjacent lumber mill. Very specific, but bonus for adjacent mines. Venus, that's bonus to growth and also boost pastures. Not bad at all. Oh, and apparently we can also build the pyramids. That's, that's a lot of stone, actually. That's, yeah, several thousand golds worth of stone. I'm kind of losing money fast, so maybe don't worry about that. Instead, yeah, Vesta is just a giant pile of... Uh, culture together with bonus money per adjacent resource does yes horses count as a resource even if they're not being worked on right now screw it we're gonna do that so basically what i'm doing is i'm setting up an empire where we have multiple state religions where everybody's just sort of doing their own thing which is either going to go very well or very badly i'm not sure there's a middle ground here oh and we're getting more and more say in cornelia so she's currently 12 okay Studies philosophy, studies rhetoric. Seriously, by the way, did I never actually have any children? Okay, my wife is currently 50, so I can see how there might be problems, potentially, there in terms of uh, having more children. So, okay, I can say what she's going to study. That's going to affect her stats and also can lead in certain directions. So, okay, education is very Crusader Kings too. I can give her a rough direction, but it's up to chance whether it works well or not. Though it feels like they're all good results. There's not really anything like, you know, too much of a disaster here. How about commerce? Yes, go on. Let's make her good at, you know, making money and stuff. Oh, and tragic news. Boudicca's died at the age of 53. Aw, that's sad. And also it makes me wonder, just, just out of interest, how old am I? Okay, I'm 46. I'm less than a decade younger. That's a concern. Oh, here's fun, by the way. We found some graffiti. And apparently it's old Latin, and that is useful because we can either display it, which is worth culture, because, you know, it's culture to look at old graffiti. I know I'm a classicist. I loved old graffiti. In Pompeii, it's magnificent. Uh, so, alternatively, study it. That's worth a giant pile of science. Or, legitimacy, screw vulgar old language. I'm going to take the, uh, the science because uh, we're almost done with drama. And drama's really interesting because uh, you may have noticed this entire time uh, there's been something a bit uh, absent from this game. This entire time, the game's not had music. Why? Because your society hadn't invented it yet. But now I've researched drama, music exists and starts playing and that's such a cute touch, I love it. Oh, and apparently Duchess Cornelia is now an adult. So okay, she ended up with, uh, yeah, one to wisdom, two to discipline. And now I get to choose uh, what we do with her. So she could become a diplomat, serving as a governor or ambassador. And uh, honestly, that's probably not a bad thing. Money's always been a bit tight for us. So uh, her serving as a governor, not bad. Not bad at all. Or commander. Oh, no, that's definitely not a good idea. No, 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 no. Then again, that does actually give her a giant pile of, uh, yeah, uh, discipline that gets her money. It's kind of used for, ooh. Okay, but then she can't serve as a governor, even though that would be good governor stats. So, uh, okay, diplomat it is. I feel like that's got to be the best option. So, yeah, she picks up a bunch of charming. Lovely. So, there we go. And to be honest, yeah, I'm feeling like this here, this is a good thing. She could be my heir. So, I mean, she's better than flipping Remus, isn't she? Well, okay, well... The problem is, he's just losing giant piles of money constantly. Yeah, I'm going to move her over. She is now going to be the heir. Spec flipping tacular. 
Oh, but there she is. Sadly, we don't have Sean Bean reading out a little bit of information about it, but the lighthouse of not Alexandria, the lighthouse of Rome is complete. And uh, six culture together with 15 gold. And here's interesting. The Babylonians have come to me saying they want to wage war against barbarians uh, and they want me to help fund it. I give them a giant pile of uh, iron. They gain two warriors. Now, admittedly, they have been pretty chill with me so far, and uh, if they clear out the barbarians, I might be able to just snap the cities, because they're just heading north right now, doing a lot of work against the Thracians, who I don't really care about one way or the other. I'm going to say yes, and just continue building a relationship with uh, Babylon. All right, because I'm getting on with this new woman way better than her predecessor, and things are actually starting to um fall apart a bit here. Not, you know, necessarily in terms of the empire, but personally... My wife's died, and without her, yeah, the science rate has collapsed, because it's not just about you, it's about everybody else. And also, hang on, hang on, who the cock are all these people? Oh, Princess Cornelia's already got married, and had bloody children. Okay, that was cocking fast. Also, I'm going to be honest, the relationship with um Babylonia has taken a turn. So, remember how we just gave them a pile of free stuff, so they could have free troops? Um, they're now using those troops to extort money from us. Um, which is not great because they've got a lot more troops than us. In part because we just gave them some troops. So, okay, this is fine. I'm just going to give them money so they leave me alone. Alright, not a problem. I got plenty of food. Rome is swimming in food. Though, maybe we ought to put together an army because, yeah, that was, um, that took a turn for the worse there. And here we flipping go. Okay, now I'm single. I can choose a new partner. Now the world's opened up, there's a lot more options. So, uh, okay. I can choose someone from uh, the Vandals. So that helps my relationship with the city-state. And uh, to be honest, I mean, you know, from the picture, she's pretty cute. That's a cute suitor. And then there's, oh no. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah, it's the Vandal suitor. I know it's the stupidest option because she's from a minor barbarian backwater on the far side of the planet. But... She's cute. She's coming with the discipline. She's bringing me, you know, money. Yep, there we go. Congrats. Welcome to the team. And it's starting to happen. The entire first generation is falling apart. King Cyrus of Persia has died. So there's a new ruler over there. And I am severely ill. Meaning at this point I can hold on. But if I do, I'm actually hurting my empire. Because I'm actually losing stats right now. And that directly impacts the wider empire. So... I think it might be time. Because in this game, you don't need to wait to die. If you choose to, you can just say, you know what? Fair enough. It's time for me to go. So, I'm really sorry to my new hot vandal wife. Because she was kind of lured over here on the promise of being the Queen of Rome. And then, like, you know, day after she arrives, I'm stepping down. We're just going to go hang out in my lovely Odeon or whatever. But, uh, sorry. It's, uh, it's time for me to step down. It's time for fresh blood. And there we go. I am now Cornelia the New. Spec flipping tacular. All of a sudden, all these are going to start moving around because, yeah, there is a brand new spouse, King Consort Sextus, who is uh, honestly not great. We might want to replace him. And as my new leader is a diplomat, that's her core archetype. Yeah, we've actually got the ability to do much better in terms of uh, diplomacy. And that's a good opportunity to potentially reset relations with Greece. So uh, a change of ruler can be a good opportunity to rethink who you're friends with, uh, who you're enemies with, uh, all the rest of it. And so with Romulus having tragically passed away, uh, but for the time being things looking, well, okay, mostly good. I mean, this might be a good chance to uh, try and make peace, renegotiate some new terms uh, with the Babylonians, or train a brand new army and murder the flip out of them because... Uh, can't help but notice they're sort of uh, standing around nearby. I'm squatting on this site with my swordsmen so that, you know, uh, they can't come and take it for themselves. But they do seem to be sort of uh, gathering nearby, looking deeply threatening. So, okay, possibly Cornelia would have to deal with war with Babylonia. But I would say, ladies and gentlemen, I think you get the point. This here is Old World and it is, uh, it's very interesting. There's so many really good ideas uh, going on here. Lots of fun stuff from Civilization, Crusader Kings. It's a really interesting blend of ideas. 
if there's one problem, I think it might be a bit overcomplicated. There might be a bit too much stuff going on, though that might just be a function of uh, the UI in the tutorials not being comprehensive enough. Though, uh, I feel like, yes, there's, uh, there's a lot of cocking balls you need to be keeping in the air simultaneously. I think it could bear to be slightly simplified, at least, you know, for the first 20 turns or something. So it eases you in a bit more, because... Uh, Civ, you know, starts off simple, and then it gets progressively more complicated. This kind of ends up being a little bit nuclear unfriendly, just because there's so much stuff you need to be doing right from the get-go. In a way, that reminds me a bit of Crusader Kings 2, because in CK2, there's a ridiculous amount that you could do from the get-go, and it can be a bit overwhelming for new players, so... Okay, I need to go and have a think about this one. Maybe play it a bit more in my own time, maybe keep an eye on it. Alright. It's interesting, it just needs a little bit of polish to get it over the line. So, hopefully, it receives the love it deserves, and we can see it again in future We Shall Flipping See. But in the meantime, I'm Ben Johnson, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Old World. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Now, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way, otherwise they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over- yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.